Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to perform cost analysis and quantity takeoffs. We can perform cost analysis and quantity takeoffs with our markups, and some of these markups include measurements as well. So, we can take these measurements right here, for example, and select them, and we can already see some information on some of these measurements. We can see that with an area measurement, we can already turn on not only the area, but we can calculate the volume, and if we assign a depth to that area, then we can essentially get lots more information here. We're going to open up our properties panel right here, and then we can essentially look at the top here, and before we get too detailed in this, we can just scroll down to show caption, and we can look at this edit area right here, and this is where we can turn on more information. So we can even see the length. The length actually is the entire perimeter of the area. The wall area, which includes basically the depth multiplied by the actual length or the perimeter of the area. So we can calculate that very easily. The width is just the horizontal length, and the height is actually the vertical length right here. So the length is actually the perimeter in this case, and depth is considered height in the program. So now you guys don't need to get too confused when you're trying to assign captions to certain things. Then, if we scroll up in properties, we can see that this markup has some information here at the top. The most important information is the subject and the label. The label is just for identification purposes, but the subject allows us to control what kind of materials we assign to this markup. So, for example, the subject here is set to exterior, so if we scroll all the way down, we can see that material is here, and we can click on this drop-down, and we can see that this drop-down shows many different kinds of materials. The ones that are assigned to the same subject happen to be concrete and wall paint, and very soon I'll show you that duct iron pipe, steel pipe, and toilets do not have subjects assigned to them. So I can assign them to any markup regardless of that markup's subject. So we can still use the subject to categorize these things properly, and we can give different subjects to things that basically don't use different material subjects, so to speak. So I'll demonstrate that very soon. Now we can see here in our custom area that I'm also calculating all of our cost analysis right here. So the area of the floor of this concrete area is essentially $721 and the area here is 240 square feet. So how do we calculate that? Well we need to know the cost per square foot of concrete. So we can open up our markups list and if you already have a markup selected in the markups list then you'll want to deselect it and then reselect it in order to use it to navigate to the markups location in the list. Then we can scroll to the right side. Whoops, excuse me. I accidentally selected another markup. Let me just navigate back and click on this one again. There we go, it's selected. I'm just going to use this sidebar now to scroll to the right here so that we can see more information about this markup, including that cost analysis. And the most important part is the material right here. There's a number next to it. Now let me see, if I stretch out properties we can't see the cost per material here in this drop-down, so we can only assign materials there. So instead, it's just a lot easier to open up your markups list, and as long as this column is big enough, as you can see if I make it smaller, it kind of hides the cost. But there it is. The cost is three units per one unit of whatever the material is. So this is going to be three dollars per square foot of concrete. Now, Concrete isn't usually measured by area, it's measured by volume, so because the depth of the concrete is set to the standard 6 inches, now we can get our cost for the volume itself right here. And if we were calculating by area, we have that as well. We can even see that wall area and even pipe length are actually available, but count quantities is not turned on, and that's because this would require a count to work. Now we're going to be using count and different kinds of variables in order to calculate our cost analysis, so now let's get into our custom columns and let's begin. We can find our custom columns by going to our markups list dropdown and then mousing over columns. And at the bottom of this list, we can see manage columns right here. Now we're in the manage columns dialog and we're going to switch from display order to custom columns right here. So here are the custom columns. And as you can see, they're all in our markups list. So as soon as we make them, they appear in the list and we can now modify them. When beginning cost analysis, we first need to create our materials column. This is essentially a choice column. We can see the type right here. So I'm going to click on modify. Here we can see I've made many different kinds of materials for this demonstration. 
So we have different materials with subjects. We also have materials that don't have subjects. A material with a subject can only be used on a markup with the same subject. So I can only use the exterior materials here and here, and I can only use the interior ones, these four right here. And then these three here don't have any subjects. So how did I make these materials? I just clicked on add down here. I gave them an item name, which can be anything you want, just for quantification purposes. The subject, of course, is very important. If you leave it empty, it's a lot more easier to assign the material to any markup, regardless of subject. And then the numeric value is right here. So I clicked on the check here, and I gave it a number. So for example, concrete, if we click on modify, will cost three whatever currency per one of whatever unit. So in our case, it's usually going to be three square feet, three cubic feet, et cetera, et cetera. Or excuse me, three dollars per square foot or three dollars per cubic foot. And then if I have a material that I like to use more often, and when I create a markup, if I want that material to be assigned automatically, I can set it as a default. So I actually don't have any defaults here. So I'm going to choose concrete exterior because it's a very common one that I use very frequently. And we're going to select it as default and click OK. Now, under default, it says yes. So these are our materials, and now we are essentially done with them. All of the others are very similar to the first one that I just demonstrated, so we can click OK again. Now we can begin with cost analysis. So all we had to do was click on Add, but I'm just going to modify one of my existing cost analysis formulas. So we're going to start with floor area, and then we gave it a name at the top, and then we chose its type. Now we use the choice column for the materials because we're choosing different kinds of materials. And now we're going to create a formula that includes those materials as well. So the formula is now in this expression. I'm going to delete it and recreate it from scratch. So first we need to get any variable that we want. And we don't have to type in the first letter of variable. We can just type in any letter that we want to. Now the variables list pops up, so we can choose between different kinds of variables. You'll also see that all of my custom columns are variables. So all of our cost analysis columns and the material column are very customized variables that we can use. So we're going to use material first, so I'm going to double click on it in the list. Now I can do space, the star above the number eight, so shift and then eight to get that nice multiplication symbol. Space again, and then I'll just type in another letter. And in this case, we're doing the floor area, so area would be correct. Before we move on, you can see that if I scroll down this list, we actually have different kinds of calculus formulas and variables here. So we can use some constants such as pi, and we have some functions such as sine and cosine. So there's a lot of different fancy, complicated formulas that you can make. But for, quantum, for quantity takeoffs and cost analysis, we usually just need to use things like area, length, volume, etc. So I'll double click on area and our variable, or excuse me, our formula is essentially done. So we can see that our currency can be chosen under the format. So it usually is set to normal. So I want to calculate this in dollars. So I'm going to use currency, two decimal places for the cents, and I'm using dollars, but I could use other currency symbols from around the world. I'm also going to use include in totals. I usually check this on. It allows me to automatically quantify the total amount of areas that this column is going to give us. So we can essentially include this in totals and we can include all of them in totals so that we can just automatically very quickly quantify how many volumes we have, what is the total volume altogether of all of our volumes, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna quickly show the other columns. We're just gonna select this and click on modify. Everything is the same except it's material times volume for the volume, so very simple. And then we go to wall area. This one is very special because usually wall area is calculated by height times length. In this case, we don't really need to worry about that because wall area is a special variable. So if I just delete it and type the W key, we can see that wall area is down here. And there's something special about this one. It is actually a preset variable, but it is a combination of different variables already. So that's, because, that's why we have these brackets around wall area. So now we can see that this is slightly different, but it still works like other variables. So we're going to click OK. And then let's look at pipe length. Very simple. It's just material times length. We don't have to call it pipe length in particular. It could be the length of anything. So this is just the name that I'm giving this one because I'm usually calculating pipes whenever I'm using this column. So then we'll click on cancel. And let's look at the count one. This one is a really special one that I learned about personally very recently. You can actually use your count tool 
with quantity takeoffs. So that's why I called this a count quantities cost analysis. So you can essentially find the count variable in your variables list, and there it is. So this is essentially how we created the custom columns, and now I'm going to show you how we can utilize them even more effectively. Let's begin using our markups with our custom columns. So we've already demonstrated this a little bit earlier in this tutorial, but we'll click on this concrete area, and now we can see all the information about it. So what information is important about this concrete area in order to get our information down here? Well, the area is pretty easy because we're using an area tool, so the area will automatically be calculated as long as our subject aligns with our material column. Let me make my side panel a little bit bigger so you guys can see this easier. So I can choose between different ones. So if I switch between this interior material right here, now all of my numbers in my, my columns and my markups list have changed. I'll do that one more time. Let's switch to maybe the steel pipe one, for example. So good. Now that one is not necessarily going to work 100% uh, with all of the different columns, but it basically does have its own variable. So if we go back to our columns, actually we don't have to do that. We can just look in our materials list down here in our markups list. Just make the column a little bit bigger because we'll see the cost per unit right next to the actual material name. So it costs about $100 per square foot or per foot of pipe. So now let's go back to our area. Let's switch it back to concrete. And what's important for concrete is if we want to calculate its volume, we need to have its height. Now in Bluebeam Review, height is actually considered to be the depth. So we can find that by going to our measurements panel right here. And then we can scroll down a little bit. While a markup is selected, we're going to see the special area measurement properties. And this changes. So if I select another kind of markup, now it says a radius measurement properties. And if I don't have anything selected, it essentially just says measurement properties and all of it is grayed out because we can't really use it unless we have a markup selected. So we'll select this one and now we need to make some changes here because we can see that our volume is very exaggerated. So eight feet is not typical for concrete. I believe that six inches is much more typical for the thickness of concrete. So let's change our units here from feet to inches and look at that. Now our volume changes accordingly and this makes much more sense. Now, we also have a bit of an odd issue here. Look at the floor area here. So we need to make sure that this is being calculated correctly. So our area on the sheet is fine and our scale is 1 8th of an inch equals a foot. Let's make sure that there's no other variables that are affecting our area. Our area is in square feet, so we can always change our units here. And it looks like the cost does make sense because if we look at the material column, it costs $3 per square foot. So 3 times 269 equals roughly 807. So that's how we're getting our area. So everything now is calculating accordingly. Now let's look at one with wall area. We can see that wall area is being calculated, but it's not really going to be useful with an area tool. It's best used if you try to use the perimeter or the um, length tools. So we can click on any length. So let's, let's actually go down to this one. I've used this one for demonstrations before. Let's make sure that our variables are correct here. So the depth or height of this wall is 10 feet. By the way, just to give you guys an inf some information, the height in Bluebeam Review is actually considered the long length of any kind of polygon. So for an area, it would be this length right here. And the width is actually considered the <laughs> horizontal length, so to speak. So the width would be considered to be this length right here. So anyway, back to this length tool, we are setting this to 10 feet tall. So that is perfect. And therefore, if we look at cost analysis, all we have to do now is just assign a variable to it. So let's make sure that we go back to properties. The subject is concrete. Does that line up with any variables? No, it will allow us to use any of these three materials, but that's because they don't have subjects assigned to them. So they're not necessarily going to work appropriately. But we can switch to them so we can go from ductile iron and steel. Ductile iron, I believe, if I go to my material column and make it a bit bigger, it costs $75 per square foot. So we could use that if we wanted to as our variable. Instead, I'm actually just going to change the subject here. So we're actually going to get rid of the subject altogether. And therefore, we still can only use uh, materials that don't have subjects. So let's switch this to exterior. For example, actually this is an interior wall, so we'll just go interior. And then we'll click inside of the label area to solidify this. Scroll down, and now we can choose between all of our other interior materials. 
So let's just say that the wall perhaps is made out of steel. And steel costs $4 per square foot. Therefore, the wall area now costs $367 for a 9 foot long wall that is 10 feet tall. So that's how you can calculate all of this. The length, for example, is also being calculated here. So I believe it is 9 times 4 gives us roughly 36. So that makes a lot of sense. And let's look at the last column down here, the count quantities one. This one is really, really special. I'm going to open up my markups list. And I actually have different kinds of counts right here. And we can also use the count tool. Now, these are actually sequences that are made from text boxes. So we could use them if we wanted to. But let's use the regular count tool. So all I'm going to do now is just use count. I believe it is this one right up here in my shortcuts. And if you don't see this symbol, you can go to tools, measure, and count is the second from the last one. So now that I have that ready, uh, we already were quantifying some of our toilets here. Let's actually quantify the sinks. So I'm just going to place some checks on top of each one of them. Now we can automatically find our sinks with the visual search tool. So we don't have to manually place the count tool. We can automatically find them and have the tool place counts for them. I already made a tutorial on this, so you guys can look at that if you want to use that to make this a lot faster. So the count tool is now ready. I'm going to select it. Let's check in our custom columns area. We don't have the proper subject yet, so we can't assign a material yet, but I believe that that doesn't really matter because I did not assign a subject to the material of toilets. So we're going to select that one. And each toilet, we're going to say, is going to cost $200. Now I know that we're quantifying sinks, but I just have this as an example. So $200 per item, and therefore it's going to cost $1,000 for all five of these sinks. And we can see the official count by scrolling up in our properties and seeing that it says five right here. So this is great. Let's click on this one here. This is actually for the toilets, of course. And this one is actually being totaled up with the one that we just created. So there are six actual toilets, so $1,200 for all six of them. And therefore, if the sinks and toilets were being added up and they were quantified with the same material and the same subject, they now basically cost $2,200 altogether. So that's how that totals works when we were messing around with our columns. When we turn including totals on, it allows them to automatically add to each other. And this is how we can essentially use the count tool with our quantities, and we can easily get all the quantities for our projects. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on cost analysis and quantity takeoffs with Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a very good rest of your day.